Alright, hi guys, Phil here. Right, um, looking at R squared today. Alright, this is something that students pay a lot of attention to, but really too much attention. So let's look at it. This R squared measure is, it measures the goodness of fit of a model, whatever that means. Right. So in this case, the R squared is lower than this one. R squared takes the value between 0 to 1. If it's equal to 1, that means in this case you've got a perfect fit, so it's perfect correlation between x and y. Whereas if it's close to 0, it means that your model is pretty uh, bad fit. Let's get something clear, guys, especially from an applied econometrics project or stats project. Building a model of R squared close to 1 does not mean your model is that good. Because you know that uh, when you're building a there are other conditions, assumptions that must be checked. So R squared close to 1 doesn't mean that your other assumptions of regression are satisfied. So let's say again then, the R squared we get estimates the proportion of the variation in the dependent variable that is explained by your model. That's it. Right, the variation in the variation that we're dealing with, there are three sources. total variation, that's the variation of each point fr from its mean. This explained sum of squares is the total variation in the predicted uh, y's from the mean. And RSS stands for the residual sum of squares, it's the like variation to, uh, from the total variation from the observations to each predicted value. Now there is no standard notation for these two guys, so ESS in some texts is called the error sum of squares, in which case they actually mean this, and then in that case RSS would be like the regression sum of squares, which means that. Okay, so that's why I've written these up with, a f with what they actually mean, so you can quite clear what's saying. Let's say again the definition of R square, it measures the proportion of total variability in the Y that is explained by the model. So let's try to write down what formula for R squared would be in terms of these three guys. Right, it's the proportion. So if it's a proportion, it means that it's a fraction of the total variability in the data. Right, what measures the total variability in the data, guys? It's TSS. Explained by the model. Okay, so what is which of these two means that it's variation explained by the model? Well, it's this guy. It's the. It's how well this guy. How, how far is this guy from the mean, the predicted value of y from the mean, so it's this. If we try to think of it more uh, another, from another point of view, let's, like whoever likes abstract kind of art, let this whole circle here represents TSS. Then TSS is split onto this thing, this is very important when model includes an intercept, this is the relationship between the three sum of squares, is split between the two of them. So let's say, let's say this then, all right, I'm trying to do half here. <laughs> so in that case, can you see that ES, R squared will be a half because it's, this is half, ES, ESS over TSS gives R squared and this occupies about half of the total space of TSS. How about if R squared were to equal zero, well in that case the RSS would not be zero, this whole thing would be RSS. Is that possible to have a model like that? Yes it is and it will be another exercise to show you that. So can I just backtrack, key point guys, from applied point of view if you don't want to understand much of this, this guy expression is important. Okay, so some questions they'll give you this, this, this or they might not give you all three of them, just give you two of them, then you need this to get the third one out so you can calculate this guy. Also realize guys that since ESS is equal, is will be equal to TSS minus RSS taking that to the other side, we can rewrite this as 1 minus RSS over TSS. So that's an alternative formulation, it depends in your question on what of the, which of these three quantities you're given. Finally, before I move to the question, let's just look, look at what these deviations mean in that point of our picture. TSS means it's deviation from each observed value in the y direction from the mean. Alright, so let's ignore the x. If we're looking at just here, where's the mean? Looking at that data, uh, let's guess it's maybe it's around here somewhere. Right? 
so that's my y bar then the deviations is the distance from each point to take this point down to y right so take that distance square it for each of these guys and add them together that will give me the total sum of squares this explain sum of squares is the distance the deviation from each value on the fitted line to y bar All right fitted line okay so let's say I take this point here uh, I want to use a different color ink uh, just right so anywhere on the fitted line to that Okay, corresponding to for each observation I want to n and uh, square it and add them together and then finally the residual sum of squares the distance from the each observed value say the dot to the line sum of squares now think about it guys if the line goes through all the points it means the residual sum of squares for each point will I mean the sum of residual for each point will be zero for each point right so the residual sum of squares will be zero in that case ESS will equal TSS so you've got ratio of one R squared will be one so you can think about it in terms of this picture or just like a big circle and just uh, split up into uh, two pieces an ESS and a RSS okay so now a second pass of this the population r squared may be written like this 1 minus and this is the variable the population variance of the error term divided by the total the variance of the uh, of the dependent variable these are the population ones which we don't know when we're modeling so we have only sample data so we estimate it okay so then this one is the same as this guy expression in terms of looks so this is an estimate of that or it could be written like this all right we're both estimating this one so we are estimating it from the data although in textbooks when they say interpret it you never people you don't write oh it's an estimated r square but it's an estimate guys all right so here we've got this data set okay the um, Cobb Douglas production function we're asked to compute the r square and the adjusted r square. Let's look at r squared first. Right, we're given sum of squares residual. Okay, that's in my notation is RSS. And we're given the explained sum of squares, that's ESS, but we're not given TSS and we need TSS. So that's why we need this relationship. That's why it's important to memorize it. So in the calculation here we need TSS first. Alright, just using the relationship between the three. So that gives me 3.67 and then therefore the r squared will be equal using the definite the formula but in the numbers it's 0.77 now R squared can be expressed in terms of percentages as well just multiply it by 100 gives us the percentage term so the interpretation here is that R squared had, it, we've estimated about 77% of the proportion in the variation in Y is explained by the model so what's that it's approximately if I was trying to look at it visually that would be that would be ESS and the whole thing would be TSS alright so what's left you don't have to draw this obviously it's just going to this bit here will be RSS I would add at this stage on its own it means nothing it doesn't mean that your model is a good uh, it's um, suitable for the purpose it's been built for now if you're doing prediction, if you're building model for prediction, a high R score would be good. If you are doing some mo modeling of like uh, interpreting the betas like you want to look into like causation, you know cause and effect, I'm careful how I use that. But if you're trying to interpret the betas then this absolutely means nothing by itself. Finally a small remark, because if you're doing an introduction to econometrics course it's not likely to come up, but this relationship only holds guys if you've got an intercept in your regression model so if you've got a model with no intercepts you're going to find that this does not hold and when you apply R squares given this formulation you could get negative R square that again that's another that's going to need its own video so in this case it could now just look at this the whole key is this 
when will r squared be negative? It's possible. It just depends on what this, this fraction takes. Okay guys, compute the r bar squared. I just did r squared. So in the history of r squared, goodness of fit measure, r squared came first and then adjusted r squared. So why do we need adjusted r squared? Well, r squared guys is a non-decreasing function of the explanatory variables. You have to think about what that, that that's technically speaking. So mm, kind of putting it in layman's terms, the bigger your model guys, the r squared will tend to go up towards one. And that will happen even if your explanatory variables that you put in your model are rubbish. I have very little to explain the variation in y. And that means if you use r squared, you're going to tend to favor bigger and bigger models, right? Now, because we don't want our r squared to go up just because we're putting rubbish into the model, rubbish x's, that's why we've got adjusted r squared. So adjusted r squared can go down as well as up. And it'll go down if the x's you put in are in layman's terms, rubbish. Now how do we tweak the r square so that it happens? Well, the adjusted r square, or r bar square we'll put here, is still defined the same as before, okay, where these are now estimated, but it's how these guys are estimated. So this is the estimate of the uh, variation in the error term. It's given by a formula you guys all know well, RSS divided by, if you're doing regression, n minus the number of parameters in the model, right? So let's just say it's n, I want to do it in a different color please, n minus number of parameters in your model, I'm using p for number of parameters in the model, p including intercepts, whereas TSS is over n minus 1, so these are over different degrees of freedom, whereas we compare it to r square, we're dividing like by the same degree of freedom really, right? Those n's cancel, that's where you get this. So that is measuring a variability of that, and this is measuring the variability of this. This guy, you've seen before like in first, very, very first term statistics course, so you might just call it s squared when you first see it the first time, okay? But when it's not related to the regression, and you know, guys, it's defined like this. And we're going to actually write it as you can see. Okay, you've seen this before. This is TSS. This is n minus 1. And in high school, some of you have been taught that just divide by n. But then we learn in college, divide by n minus 1, all right? For a reason that we don't need to know here. Um, so this, like, measures the average variability because TSS. Because if we just look at the top there, that's like total variability. So if we divide it by n minus 1, that gives us an idea of like the average variability of each point around the mean. Right, so now, guys, conceptually, that was the interesting bit. Now, I guess we could just calculate this thing. It's not too interesting. Okay, so we've got a number out of the substitution. It's this one. You're going to find that. In practice, adjusted r square will never be bigger than r squared. So in, uh, when we did the r squared, it was seventy-seven percent. This is just slightly lower, 70, about seventy-six and a half percent. And why it's lower, guys, is if you just compare the two equations here. All right, then you've got this difference in the fraction. So even in a simple linear regression model, you're going to have this thing over this thing, which is uh, less than one because the smaller this will be, if you've got an intercept, will be 2, so n minus 2, n minus 1, so it's n minus 1 over n minus 2, which is less than 1. Uh, sorry, I think I've got that one the wrong way around, right? So you're always going to have, you got, if you write, rewrite this, it's going to be uh, RSS over TSS times n minus 1 over n minus p, so even a simple linear regression model, where p will be 2 if you have an intercept, then up there will be n minus 2, below will be uh, n, up there, sorry, will be n minus 1, and below there will be n minus p. Okay, unless I'm going to write things down, I'm going to get myself into a mess. So I'm going to just stop there. I've said the important things. Uh, R squared, adjusted R squared, calculation of the two. Um, yeah, one final thing, adjusted R squared, sometimes you're going to see it written like, maybe more often actually, uh, like, um, like this. So in other words, the adjusted R square can be expressed in terms of uh, depending on the normal R squared. But I prefer to view it 
like this because then you can see that it's the variances what the variances you're dealing with okay guys uh, hopefully that you've you've um, made some sense of that so like comment share